Thank you. I'm Dr. Allison Gray from St. Mary's, and my talk is Contemplando a Cristo Crucificado con Pablo, or Beholding Christ Crucified with Paul. I'll speak mainly in English, but uh, some parts of it in Spanish. Each Friday in Lent, we meditate on the Stations of the Cross. We behold Christ crucified in artistic representations of the Passion and in our mind's eye. I'd like to spend some time tonight reflecting on some other ways we might see Christ crucified. Where is the crucified Lord already in our midst? How will we know him when we see him? How can we attune ourselves to new kinds of seeing as we make our journey toward the joy of Easter. Cada viernes de cuaresma, meditamos en las estaciones de la cruz. Contemplamos a Cristo crucificado en representaciones artísticas de la pasión y en el ojo de nuestra mente. Me gustaría pasar un tiempo esta noche reflexionando sobre otras formas en que podemos ver a Cristo crucificado. ¿Dónde está el Señor crucificado entre nosotros? ¿Cómo lo reconoceremos cuando lo veamos? ¿Cómo podemos sintonizarnos con nuevos tipos de visión mientras hacemos nuestro viaje hacia la alegría de la Pascua? Un teólogo que reflexionó profundamente sobre estas cuestiones fue uno de los autores del Nuevo Testamento, Pablo. One theologian who thought deeply about these questions was the New Testament author, Paul. He traveled throughout the cities of the Mediterranean world in the period between 30 and 64 CE, just after the earthly lifetime of Jesus. Paul stopped in households to preach the gospel and build up small communities. Often he would send letters back to the communities he had founded, offering encouragement, advice, and when necessary, correction. Paul's letters also show us the nature of his relationship with the crucified Christ. So I have three moments of reflection about Paul. La propia histo historia de la vida de Pablo reveló el poder transformador de la crucifixión de Cristo. Paul's own life story revealed the transformative power of Christ's crucifixion. You're probably familiar with the account of Paul's call, sometimes called his conversion. Three times in the Acts of the Apostles, we read about Paul, a devout Jew who tried to stamp out this new movement, claiming that Jesus was the promised Jewish Messiah. He persecuted Christ believers, until one day, on the road to Damascus, he heard a voice asking, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? The speaker identified himself as Jesus, and Paul began to believe that Jesus truly was the Christ, the Son of God. Paul describes the event in his letter to the Galatians, saying, God, who had set me apart before I was born and called me through his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me so that I might proclaim him among the Gentiles. And so Paul became an evangelist, a missionary spreading the gospel about Christ's crucifixion and resurrection. Y así Pablo se convirtió, uh, convirtió en evangelista un misionero que difundía, difundía el Evangelio sobre la crucifixión y resurrección de Cristo. Along the way, Paul faced opposition, from dismissal and disbelief to imprisonment and outright violence. In 2 Corinthians, he offers a catalog of all the ways he suffered. Five times I have received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I received a stoning. Three times I was shipwrecked. For a night and a day I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from bandits, danger from my own people, danger from the Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers and sisters, in toil and hardship, through many a sleepless night, hungry and thirsty, often without food, cold and naked. Yet his own suffering only made him feel more connected to the crucified Christ. Christ suffered, and Paul also suffers, in imitation of Christ. A los Galatas les dice, Yo llevo en mi cuerpo las marcas de Jesús. 
la profesora del Nuevo Testamento, Margaret Mitchell, sugiere que Pablo pensó en su predicación como un espectáculo multimedia. Explica el Evangelio en palabras, pero también afirma que representó a Cristo a través de su propio cuerpo. Ustedes, ante cuyos ojos Jesucristo fue presentado públicamente como crucificado. He tells the Galatians, I carry the marks of Jesus branded on my body. New Testament scholar Margaret Mitchell suggests that Paul thought of his preaching as a multimedia show. He explains the gospel in words, but he also claims that he represented Christ through the medium of his own body. He says, it was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly exhibited as crucified. Where do we encounter powerful preachers like Paul, those who share the ways that Christ's saving crucifixion has transformed their lives? Are there witnesses in your community whose passion for the gospel brings the crucifixion before your eyes in a new, more vibrant way? Hay testigos en su comunidad cuya pasión por el Evangelio trae la crucifixión ante sus ojos de una nueva y más vibrante manera. Let's look for them as we move through Lent. Part 2. Pablo también encontró a Cristo crucificado en los, lo, los rostros de los que sufren. Paul also encountered the crucified Christ in the faces of those who are suffering. The Christ believers in Galatia were struggling with questions about how, their faith and how to practice it. Should Gentiles be circumcised? Do non-Jews need to follow Hebrew Bible laws? Paul recognized their struggle and presented himself as a pregnant mother, putting her body on the line for the community. My little children, he says, for whom I am again in the pain of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. Hitos míos, dice, por quienes de nuevo sufro dolores de parto hasta que Cristo sea formado en ustedes. He similarly tells the Thessalonians, we were gentle among you like a nurse, tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Su preocupación maternal significa que está presente con los demás en su dolor, así como las mujeres al pie de la cruz estuvieron presentes con Jesús en su dolor. His maternal concern means that he is present with others in their pain just as the women at the foot of the cross were present with Jesus in his pain. Paul's example of compassionate presence can be connected to the corporal works of mercy, an important component of Catholic social teaching. We Christians are called to reach out to those who suffer, to recognize Christ's suffering in them and embody Christ's compassion for them. El ejemplo de presencia compasiva de Pablo puede conectarse con las obras de misericordia corporales, un componente importante de la enseñanza social católica. Los cristianos estamos llamados a tender la mano a los que sufren, a reconocer en ellos el sufrimiento de Cristo y a encarnar la compasión de Cristo por ellos. The parable of the sheep and the goats in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, explains that at the final judgment, Jesus, the Son of Man, will call us to account. He will use as a basis for judgment our care for those who suffer. Do we feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, welcome the stranger, clothe the naked, care for the sick, and visit those who are imprisoned? Jesus proclaims, truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Jesús proclama, En verdad les digo que en cuanto lo hicieron a uno de estos hermanos míos, aún a los más pequeños, a mí lo hicieron. Paul and Jesus both invite us to see that the crucified Christ is present in every place where there is suffering. Where do you see the rostro de Cristo, the face of Christ, in our city, in our world? How can you be present with those who are suffering? Today, this week, how can you offer compassionate care? And part three. 
Finalmente, Pablo nos recuerda una importante enseñanza cristiana. El sufrimiento no es el final para ninguno de nosotros. Así como la crucifixión de Cristo condujo a la, a la resurrección, nuestro sufrimiento conducirá a la transformación. Finally, Paul reminds us of an important Christian teaching. Suffering is not the end for any of us. Just as Christ's crucifixion led to the resurrection, so our suffering will lead to transformation. In his second letter to the Corinthians, the same letter where he lists all his many hardships, Paul also writes, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. Llevamos siempre en el cuerpo por todas partes por todas partes la muerte de Jesús para que también la vida de Jesús se manifieste en nuestro cuerpo. As we make our Lenten journey, a journey of sometimes painful and discouraging repentance and discipline, Paul's reminder of hope can help us transform our thinking. Even our own suffering can bring us to an intimate, powerful encounter with the crucified Christ within. St. Pope John Paul II laid out some suggestions in his 1984 apostolic letter, Salvifici Dolores, on the Christian meaning of human suffering. Sobre el significado cristiano del sufrimiento humano. He explains, as a result of Christ's salvific work, man exists on earth with the hope of eternal life and holiness. And even though the victory over sin and death achieved by Christ in his cross and resurrection does not abolish temporal suffering from human life, nor free from suffering the whole historical dimension of human existence, it nevertheless throws a new light upon this dimension and upon every suffering, the light of salvation. This is the light of the gospel, that is, of the good news. Y aunque la victoria sobre el pecado y la muerte, realizada por Cristo en su cruz y resurrección, no abolió el sufrimiento temporal de la vida humana, ni liberó del sufrimiento toda la dimensión histórica de la ex existencia humana, sin embargo arroja una nueva luz sobre esta dimensión y sobre cada sufrimiento, la luz de la salvación. Esta es la luz del Evangelio, es decir, de la buena noticia. All our suffering takes place in light of Christ, who brings an end to evil and death, who frees us for eternal life. Not only that, Christ is present with us in our suffering, from Salvifici Dolores 26, and Christ through his own salvific suffering is very much present in every human suffering and can act from within that suffering by the powers of his spirit of truth, his consoling spirit. One more. Pablo recordó a los filipenses que Jesús transformará el cuerpo de nuestro estado de humillación en conformidad al cuerpo de su gloria. Cuando vemos a Cristo crucificado en los demás o en nosotros mismos, ¿podemos aferrarnos también a la esperanza? A lo largo de nuestro camino de cuaresma, Podemos fijar nuestra mirada en la crucifixión y su promesa transformadora de resurrección. Paul reminded the Philippians that Jesus, quote, will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory. When we see the crucified Christ in others or in ourselves, can we also hold on to hope? Along our Lenten journey, can we fix our eyes on the crucifixion and its transformative promise of resurrection. Thank you.